This is the eighth video on simple modelling. In this video, we're going to summarise the analogies arrived at in the earlier videos. So we've given simple modelling derivations for systems of resistors, springs, pipes and heat conductors. And we've shown that parallel and series arrangements for each of these give rise to analogous models. The derivations we used were based on simple physics for steady state conditions. For example, two mechanical items which are joined must have the same displacement, otherwise they couldn't stay joined. We've used things like the sum of flow for current, fluid and heat into a point must be zero if that point has no storage capability. We've used things like the sum of forces at a point must be zero unless there's a mass to accelerate. And the sum of voltages around a loop must match the applied voltage. So a number of simple physical relationships have been used to derive the models of the previous videos. Basic equations we've come up with um, and used the equation for resistor. The difference in or the voltage across a resistor equals the resistance times the current through the resistor. Or if you've got fluid flow through a pipe, then the fluid flow F multiplied by some constant, essentially a resistance, equals the pressure difference across the pipe. If you've got heat flow or energy flow through a conductor, then we had the temperature difference between the two ends equals some constant Kh times the heat flow through the conductor. And for a spring, we had the force applied, F, is some constant times the extension E. And we've noticed that with all those different expressions, we've got some input, something you apply, be it a force or a temperature difference, a pressure difference, equals some constant times the effect, the effect being the current or a flow rate or displacement, something of that nature. We also looked at what happened if we had parallel and series arrangements. So if we put resistors in series, what we found is the resistances add to give you the effective resistance. So we said the resistance of the whole circuit was R1 plus R2 and so on. If we put pipes in series, we found that the effective resistance of the pipe to flow, we derived this by adding the resistances of each individual pipe. When we put conductors in series, we find the effective resistance of this to energy flow, you summed up all the Ks again, Kh1 plus Kh2 and so on. Interestingly, when we went to a mechanical circuit, here, down there, where we've got the springs, we found that to get the same type of expression, K1 plus K2, we now needed a parallel arrangement rather than a series arrangement. So if you accept that small subtlety, that the mechanical system needed a parallel arrangement, you have an analogous model by summing the stiffnesses. So, some observations. We said if the voltage or pressure or temperature change is distributed across many components, essentially a series, arra a series arrangement, then you could have the voltage is current times the sum of resistances. Or it could be that the temperature difference is the energy flow rate times the sum of some constants or so on. The key point being here that you had a sum of some constants. In mechanical systems, if the force is distributed across many mechanical components, then you have a parallel arrangement, not a series arrangement, and you get the same type of expression. You see here we have the sum of the stiffnesses. So series arrangements of things like resistors and pipes lead to this sum, whereas parallel arrangements of mechanical um, components lead to this sum. What happens, however, if we put resistors in parallel, pipes in parallel, conductors in parallel, then we've got a different sort of relationship. What we found is the easiest way to model this was by determining the total flow. So the total flow was given by the flow through loop one plus the flow through loop two and so on. And we ended up with these interesting type models here for resistor, for fluid flow and for heat flow. Now, if we then went to springs in springs, we found we had to arrange them in series because then the analogous expression was that extensions add. And if you put springs in series, extensions add. If you put resistors in parallel, then the currents add. And we got an analogous type of expression. So you see all those four expressions have got the same structure. 
So the observation, resistors in parallel share the same voltage and the current is divided among them. So the total current is the sum, is the keyword, of the currents across each component. So in this case, the sum is used on the current. If you have springs in series, then they share the same force and the displacement is now divided among them. So you find the total displacement is the sum of the displacement across each component. So again, we found these electrical circuits, parallel arrangement, you've got the sum of the flows, whereas for mechanical components and springs and things, then you needed a series arrangement to do the sum of the eventual state, the thing that was moving the displacement. So analogies, the current flow is analogous to, fleet to fluid flow and heat flow for one set of examples. But if you're going to use a mechanical system, then this becomes analogous to displacement or velocity. OK, flow is driven by a voltage or a pressure difference or a temperature difference, whereas in the mechanical system, the movement was driven by a force. So therefore, force would be analogous to voltage or analogous to pressure difference or temperature difference. For things like resistors, if you have parallel paths, the total flow is the sum of the flows for each path, and the flow increases and the resistance decreases if you add parallel paths. Conversely, in mechanical systems, you need a series path to do this. So if you have a series path, the displacements add, and the total displacement increases and the stiffness reduces. Whereas, if you go to something like an electrical circuit, if you have a series path, that increases the resistance and the flow reduces. Whereas for a mechanical system, if you have parallel paths, then you get more resistance and reduced displacement. There are a number of other components we could have looked at. Um, capacitors and tanks both store flow, um, charge, fluid, heat. And in fact, you could look at a spring also as a storage device. It sort of stores the flow of velocity. Inductors and masses resist changes in flow. Dampers and resistors both resist flow. Um, there are a lot of other analogous arrangements and components that we can look at, but it's not helpful to produce hundreds of videos going through all of these. And we hope that students have the skills to sort this by themselves. Looking forward, however, there are some things that we should note. When people talk about analogies more generally, they will often, and here's the key difference, is they will make an analogy of current, which is a flow, with velocity, rather than current with displacement. Okay. One reason for that is electrical impedance is defined as voltage over current, whereas mechanical impedance is defined as force over velocity. So if you're going to use these terms of impedance and uh, therefore do formal analogies, it's easier to link current with velocity rather than current with displacement. Again, once we move on to dynamic modeling, that will become much more obvious and we'll do a lot more analogies in the set of videos to come. Now, Another reason why you might say we should use velocity and not displacement is to do with equivalence in units. What you'll notice is flow rate, current, it's got units of coulombs per second. Okay, the um, heat flow had units of joules per second, fluid flow had units of meters cubed per second, and therefore, for a strict analogy, you might say, well, for the mechanical system, I should be using meters per second because then I've got units that match.